My name is Marion Landry and I'm the Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. This series of tips and tricks is aimed at the product design suite user that is fairly new with 3ds Max design. The goal is to offer three different rendering solutions to achieve photorealistic quality when you import your inventor model in 3ds Max design. I will show you these three solutions while using Mental Ray as well as iRay Rendering Engine. Let's get started. Hi, so this is the first tips and tricks on rendering with 3ds Max Design and for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to use the Morgan three-wheeler model that was created in Inventor and you see it here in Inventor. So I'm going to send this directly to 3ds Max Design. So directly in Inventor, you do have the Suite Workflow button and the options available using the Suite Workflow is to send this to an eye detail mesh, a regular mesh or a solid model. I'm not going to use the Suite Workflow for this particular exact example rather I'm gonna choose to start 3ds max design on my own and start directly from 3ds max design but whichever workflow you decide to do you will get to the same results before you start importing it is important to go under the customize menu and open the unit setup and set up the display unit which for my particular case I know I'm working with feet and inches as well as the system units, which are going to match what my display units are using. So let me explain a little better here. The unit that you set under the display unit scale are used to measure geometry in your scene. For example, each of these box object parameter is showing in feet in inches measurements because that's what I have set in my um, unit display setup. In addition to these units, 3ds Max Design also uses system units as an internal mechanism. So note the distinction between system and display units. Display unit only affects how the geometry is displayed in the viewport, whereas system units determine the actual scale of the geometry. For example, if you import a file containing a one by one by one box, 3ds Max Design could import the box's dimension in inches or mile or meters depending on the system units. So you see how this can have a significant impact on your scene, which is why it's really important to set the system unit before you import and create a geometry. This system unit will become quite important when you start applying material, for example, um, using the Autodesk material library all of these material use a unit scale um, parameter, basically a texture that has a physical scale. And if you're working under the proper unit setup, then you'll be able to apply the Autodesk material on your objects and the texture will be scaled appropriately to what they were designed to look like. So you could see the brick here is looking at the right size, the metal, the stone, everything is actually built and working properly when my unit settings are set accordingly. This will also be quite important when you start working with physically based lighting because physically based lighting computation implies that the light attenuates using the inverse square fall off law, which simply means that the intensity of light declines exponentially with the distance it travels. So it's quite crucial that the scale of the scene correspond to the real world data. Otherwise, the result can be wrong. So if you're planning on using the templates that exist in 3ds Max Design for photometric lights or to load your own photometric web, then it's important to you to work within a certain unit and make sure that it corresponds to the information that you have from the light manufacturer. And not to mention that if you start using, for example, populate crowd animation or foliage or anything that Max has to offer, everything is designed with a, to work within a certain unit scale. So if you're working in feet and inches, the minute you drop populate character, they'll be at the right size. If you drop some foliage, they'll be at the size that they were designed to look like. So you know when you're working in the wrong scale, when you start using Max Design templates, everything is out of scale and you're dealing with a major problem. 
System units should always be changed before you create a scene or before you import. Do not change the system unit in an existing scene because it will throw everything out of whack and you'll be dealing with major issues. And now you're ready for the import process. Now, the minute I go and click the import button, it's going to bring me to the default project folder, which is under my documents. So this is not where I want my project. I actually want to create my own project folder located on my C drive and within my own project folder, all the subfolder that this particular project will need. So I'm going to create a new, pro a new folder basically on my C drive, wherever I want it. This could be anywhere on your computer. Um, and I'm going to create here a new folder and I'm going to name this uh, inventor workflow. And basically all the information now is going to be contained within this project folder. When I do create the project folder, it's basically creating a folder with all the sub folder that 3ds Max project will need. So the scene will go under the scene folder and the import object will go under the import object. So now when I click import, it's going to point directly to this particular import folder because I have told 3ds Max to look into this project. So here I am, I'm click on the import and you can see that is now pointing to my project folder that I have just created. Now there's nothing in this import folder because I haven't placed anything. So it's up to me to basically copy and paste my inventor model within this import folder or to go fetch it wherever it is on my computer. Now I do highly suggest that you follow the project folder and copy everything that you need for this particular project within the appropriate subfolder. So now I can go ahead and import the dot I am. Now I will be faced with the import setup window and I can choose to either import it as a mesh as we saw and decrease or increase the uh, resolution of the mesh. I can import as a body object. I'm going to keep the assembly option as is. I'm going to choose to completely replace the current scene or I could choose to merge it with a current scene. I'm going to keep the material option as they are and make sure that the Y axis is up, which is how it's set up in Inventor. So this might take a few minutes and once the model is fully imported, this is what you are getting. So let's have a look at this here. So we have the model the same way that it was shown in Inventor. You'll notice that I'm having a realistic view. I can also change that to a shaded view. I am looking at this model within a perspective view. So there's no camera in this scene so far. This is a body object as I have imported it. It is using a fine resolution. I can change that to a medium or coarse. You also have the option to convert this body into an editable mesh or poly, which is an important thing to remember. So when you do import and you import into a body object, it's great because you can also later on change it into a polygon or mesh object once you're in 3ds Max design. Now looking at the scene explorer, notice that there's a link gizmo box object, which if I unhide this object, it will allow me to move the complete model. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. It's a gizmo object that is parent, the parent of all the object. It, the um, layer structures also came in the way that it was set up in Inventor. So another way to navigate through your scene if you're more familiar with uh, layers, if you prefer. Now looking at the rendering window, notice that Mental Ray is the default rendering engine and it's set up that way. By default, it will render an image 640 by 480. You might want to change that to an HD size image. Keep in mind, there's no camera right now, but I can change to an HD image. So 1920 by 1080. Most likely I'm going to render 800 pixel across, so a smaller image. Um, I might want to ch show the aspect ratio so I know exactly what is the area that I am rendering by showing the safe frame. So the area within that yellow frame is what will be rendered. Next, I'm going to open the rendering window and I'm going to decrease the rendering settings in my rendering window to make sure that I have a quick render and you'll see that the render is nothing impressive. It's basically using the mental ray default lighting, 
which bring me to the main topic of this tips and tricks series, which I'm going to offer you three different way, easy way to render a realistic looking model that you import from Inventor. So the first option is to render with a daylight system. Second option is to use a studio type lighting, which is included in a max sample scene. And the third option is to use an HDR type lighting.